Snugs for days. Oh, this is definitely my sister. All right. <clears throat> well, have you done it? Uh, yes, little miss. I've been tracking her movements, and she seems to mainly move between her home and her school. Are you sure it's the right girl? Yes, miss. We've been tracking her for over an extended period to confirm it. Lovely. I don't want Toko escaping. Yes, she certainly has a way of, um, weaseling her way out of situations. Uh, tell me about it. I mean, that brat was never any fun to play hide-and-seek with. Of course, uh, the Little Miss was win every game, even if it means following the secret everywhere she goes. Absolutely. There's gonna be no cheating me like I cheated her. Indeed. Uh, well, we've made sure to have numerous agents around the city. She won't get out of this so easily. Great. Oh, right. How's the zombie doing? A uh, little miss, you know you've been rebuked for calling her that. No, 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 it's a term of endearment. Oh, well, in any case, she's following Toko as requested. A bit conspicuously, might I add. Of course. Jeez, can't take her, can't get her to take anything seriously. Uh... Okay, can you hear me yet? Come on, sexy butt. Wake up and pay attention to me. Oh, is it Nadia? Uh huh? Hello, Toko noticed me already. What? That's it, finally. It's about... Toko, good morning. Isn't life grand? Oh, you were calling for me, Nadia? Yeah, you were sleeping pretty soundly, so I felt bad waking you up. Nadia refrains from mentioning that Toko had tossed a lot in the night and ended up clinging to Nadia for warmth. She didn't think the girl could take it, as cute as it was. But on the other hand, your breakfast is getting cold. Ugh, I would rather sleep. Your tummy says otherwise. Fine. Come on, come on, get your butt ready for breakfast. What is this thing? A frittata? It's a specialty of mine, mostly because it is so easy to make. My family recipe has bacon, gobs of cheese, and a secret ingredient curry powder. I don't know what any of that stuff is. Then eat it and tell me what you think. Toko pokes it with her fork and cuts off a bite. She spent her whole life without needing to eat, but all of a sudden she can't go a day without her stomach making noises. I shouldn't even need to eat. I'm fine with it. Ugh. Huh? Uh, what's icky? Something is in my mouth. It's making my tongue hurt. What did you do to me? Oh, <laughs> the curry powder is kicking in. It's got a good punch. This is terrible! Ugh! Make it stop! Ugh! Ah! <laughs> fine, fine. Here, drink some milk. It'll help. Nadia walks back to the kitchen, opens the fridge, and pulls out a carton of milk. She pours a glass and brings it back to Toko, who snatches the carton instead and downs the whole thing. Oh! Okay. That helped. Ugh. Jeez, I'd be out of food in days at this rate. Do you feel better? Do you want to eat some more? No way, that frittata thing is poison. My stomach feels all gross. Nadia pouts. What a picky eater. She might be a university student, but she's proud of her cooking skills. It's just one slice. I know you're petite and all, but I can eat a whole frittata, no problem. Ugh, just thinking about it makes me feel like one of those monsters that keeps spewing up what it eats. Hey now, it wasn't that bad. If you need to throw up, you can use the bathroom. What? Humans do that too? Gross. What do you mean by humans? Anyway, you look perfectly fine. Well, if you don't like spicy food, I guess we can spend today going to the mall. There's all kinds of different foods to try. The what? And eat more weird food? I don't want to go if that's what we're doing. Well, tough luck. You need clothes, since mine don't fit you, and I'll need mine back soon. What's the point of clothes anyway? <laughs> what a silly question. You were shivering last night. Even if you don't think you need to stay warm, you definitely do. I can't keep you warm forever with just my bud. You'll need some nice thick sweaters and things before it gets really cold. Fine, I'll go, but no curry! Great, I knew you'd agree. And once we're at the mall, we can get you new clothes and try out a bunch of food and, I don't know, goof off at the arcade and stuff. Toko, over here. Ugh, there's so many clothes. I'm gonna get lost. I did tell you to hold my hand, didn't I? Maybe I just thought it... Anyway, the first things you need are underwear, so let me know what catches your eye. Uh, they all look soft and boring, so... These are boring? Well, come over here then. Nadia lifts a pair that look very much like a lacy tea bag. Ta-da! What do you think? Exciting enough for you? There's no way I'm gonna wear that. 
Oh, why not? It's not like you were that modest when we first met. Well, I was different, okay? You're making me sad. Which ones do you want? I don't know. Something more normal, I guess. Any reason you're picking only black stuff? I don't know. It looks nice. Fair enough. Try and splash a little color in your outfits. Because once you try them on, we'll move on to outerwear. What's outerwear? Whether what you wear over panties and bras and stuff. Oh, you don't just wear these like normal people? <laughs> Toko. As soon as you get the chance, please tell me wherever you're from, because I need to go there. Toko, are you blushing? Am I what? <laughs> Never mind. You do need to find warmer clothes, though. Fine. Let's see. Uh, this? I don't know. Ooh, such a deep, piercing blue, like the sea at night. Make sure it fits you. Try it on in the changing room over there, and I'll get you some more things to try on while you do it. Toko leaves for the changing room. I like she just like slides off screen like, bye. Toko leaves for the changing rooms after being shown where they are. She nervously closes the curtain behind her and pulls the baggy hoodie over her head to set it aside, leaving her own demon outfit underneath covered by the button-up shirt she wore last night. Looking in the mirror, she can feel the embarrassment rush back to over what us rush back. Looking in the mirror, she can feel the embarrassment rush back to her over what a suggestive outfit it is. At this point, she's completely content to wear human clothes, an idea that seemed insane to her only a day ago. Alright, now to try on the underwear. Uh, okay, I guess this one fits. Ooh, can I see? Why do you want to see? I don't know, I'm like curious. Toko pops her head out of the curtain and glowers at Nadia. Fine, just don't make a fuss. Ooh, it's a little bit tight, but do they feel comfortable? <laughs> Nadia is such a perv. I don't know, is it fine? I don't know. If you like it, then I like it, so try this on. I don't even know how to wear this. But they're just jeans, you slip them on. Come on, Toko, you're scaring me a little. Don't worry, I'll help you out. It's not like anyone here will think anything bad about two girls helping each other in a changing room. There's something in your tone of voice that I find highly suspect right now. Nadia helps fasten the button on Toko's jeans after several after trying several pairs of pants and shirts on her. Nadia takes as much liberty as she can to help Toko make sure that those jeans fit just right. More? And these look way too small to keep warm. I thought that was the whole point of coming here. No, no, no. That other pair was too loose in the inseam. I have to get an idea of your measurements to know what will be the best fit for you. Besides, you can never have too many clothes, and if you layer them appropriately, you'll still be perfectly snug. Nadia tests another pair of jeans on Toko, humming quietly to herself as she fastens the button and diligently zips them up. Toko turns her head to the side, her face flushing red as Nadia slides her hands between Toko's jeans and her waist, tugging and testing the fit of her clothes. These are perfect, but we really should try on some more stuff. No! Nope! This is enough! This is gonna last me like two lifetimes, so go put the other stuff back! Don't worry about me, I have the money to afford it, but... Fine, just don't let me have my fun. Yeah. Fun. This day's already been way more trying than I'd ever imagined. Well, we can take a little break then, and get some food, and prepare for the world of excitement coming your way. Ugh. I can't wait. Hmm. Glancing around, Ginjo notices a decent amount of people walking down the street. This is good. Mmm. What? Meh. You are hungry anyway, right? Mmm. Okay, good. Looking around to make sure no one is paying attention to her at the moment, she subtly summons Rhapsody. After doing so, Ginjo unfolds a small box that somehow fit in her pocket, marked with TIPS, and sets it in front of her. After a few warm-ups, she starts playing, and while not attracting a large crowd, a few people do toss some coins and dollars into the box. It goes on for a while like this before. You don't have a job? The guy addressing Ginjo sniffs haughtily, looking down his nose at her. Uh, well, this is my side job. Well, maybe if you spent more time at the job than panhandling, you wouldn't need a side one. Well, you don't know that. Do you have a song request? For a moment, he appears taken aback by the lack of a reaction on Ginjo's part. Uh, if not, I will just continue playing. Well, that's, uh, you're being rude and disturbing people who want to listen to my beautiful music. I doubt they appreciate it. Most likely because of Ginjo's deadpan manner, her heckler becomes uncomfortable and walks off, muttering about weird girls on street corners. However... Ugh! What the- I tripped! On what?! He looks back at Ginjo, sending her a glare. 
Genjo gives from her usual deadpan look as a response. Did- did you trip me? I'm nowhere near you, at least twelve feet and eight inches away. Well, I- you- I- Genjo continues playing and ignores the sounds of indignation and confusion. Twenty minutes later, she stops to count how much money is in her box, which unfor unfortunately doesn't seem to be all that much. Twenty dollars and ninety-eight cents. This will not buy me that much food. Suppose I can save this for a second lunch. Maybe I can do something else until then. Hmm. Should I? That was mean earlier. Hmm. I guess that's true. All right. We'll do that. It sounds like fun. See, those look great on you. I guess. What is this place? It's really smelly. Hey, that's no way to talk about the finest cuisine a mall has to offer. Now, what catches your eye and your nose? Ugh, what is this even for? Food? You can't really expect to not eat. You'll get sick. Really? How often do I have to eat? You can't be serious. At least three meals or so a day, obviously. That sounds awful. Well, how does your tummy feel right now? Rumbly. Then you definitely need food. Come on, pick whatever looks good. It's all pretty cheap, so you can grab things from a few different places if you want. We bought- oh, we bought the- Mmm! <laughs> we bought nearly every dish from the first three restaurants you saw. Well, you said I should try different stuff! I didn't mean- <laughs> Never mind, we already bought it. You better eat everything you made me pay for. I will. Uh, how do I eat this? The pizza, you just pick it up and bite it. It's easier if you start from the pointy end. Pointy end. Okay, right. You're getting sus and pepperonis all over your face. Here, let me clean it off. Hey, what was that? Oh, <laughs> she like licked my face. But I was just licking, clicking, cl I mean cleaning your face. Well, you licked it. So what do you think of the pizza? Did she really just try to change the subject? It's greasy. That's all you have to say about it? Yeah. It's so disappointing. You're just not cut up for fast food. Hmm. Baked potato probably isn't too greasy, except for all the bacon and butter. Which one is that again? This weird blobbly thing? That's the one. Uh, it's kind of blunt. Ugh, what is this white stuff? It is super tangy. Sour cream. I like it. You can have it. You're not easy to please, are you? Maybe if you weren't so fickle, you would still be back wherever you're from. That. Look, just help me find something that I can eat. What about this thing? Is it like- is that also- is it pizza? Oh, that? It's pie. It looks like you got cherry, which is perfect for you. Of course, you'll probably complain that the sweetness hurts your teeth. Oh, this is so good. Oh, you like the pie, huh? I want more of this. <laughs> well, now, I'd be happy to feed you pies whenever you want, Toko. Lol. As the two eat, a quiet spy watches carefully from one of the food lines, tracking Toko's food intake and Nadia's doting over the former demon. Oh, the line has moved. Yes, food gatekeeper, I request 30 sweet and sour tacos, 12 servings of wanton french fries, 2 family servings of dim sum ravioli with wasabi pesto, and 3 large bubble teas, and 1 box of chocolate cream mooncakes. The clerk laughs nervously at the order, and after asking several times if it's serious, calls the manager over to confirm that everything's okay. He puts the order in, and Ginjo places a stack of money on the counter. As the cooks work to fill Ginjo's orders, she turns her eye once more to the reject demon and the human girl. Nothing seems out of the ordinary between the two, although she does make a note that Toko seems to enjoy eating human food. Ginjo takes her tray of food and deftly carries them to an empty table, far enough to not be noticed, but close enough to still overhear what's being said. It's mostly arguing and gentle teasing. For a lust demon, Toko has no sense of innuendo. Toko's a lust demon? <laughs> Toko, that's why you're so bad at this. <laughs> She's like, oh, you want me to- Oh, no, I don't- uh. <laughs> She's like- built to be seductive, but like doesn't pick up on seduction at all or engage in it whatsoever. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, I can't eat anymore. Do we have to eat all of this? I suppose we can take a rest as leftovers for tonight. It's still kind of early to go home though. Nadia pauses for a moment, considering what to do. Toko glances around, observing the humans in the mall when Nadia speaks again. Oh, let's visit the arcade. The arc- what? 
Wow. I know they're not very common anymore, but you don't even know what that is? I didn't even know what jeans were, Nadia. Come on. Where are you from again? Uh, Tooker realizes she's probably not the best liar. Considers how she can phrase this without directly lying about it. Out of the country? Toka winces, realizing how vague and not at all convincing she sounds. If you say so. I'm from hell. I told you this. I'm from hell. It dawns on Toko that Nadia doesn't really seem to be buying that excuse, which she can't exactly blame her for. However, before she can say anything, Nadia puts her hand on Toko's lower back. Ah! Sorry, I just wanted to make sure we stay together, since it's pretty crowded. I can stop if you want. No, it's fine. Okay, let's go then. Okay, this one is called Super Moe Dance Rangers. Why are their eyes so big? Oh, it's just the design. They take up like half their face! Oh, I think it's cute. I think it's terrifying. So anyway, here's how you play it. It's a rhythm game, and explaining the basics, however, doesn't seem to do too much for Toko, who seems unable to grasp how to play. Even after Nadia attempts to hold her hand or hips to guide her along, Toko is too slow or too fast for the timing. Ugh! Um, maybe rhythm games just aren't your forte. You were good at it. But I've had a lot more practice. The trick is dedicating hours of your time to get better, just like any skill. Well, I'm not gonna do that. Fine, fine. Here's a different game. It's called Heart of Ice, Mind of Fire. Nadia points to an arcade machine that has a person with a blue heart and a red flaming head. Uh, it's just a bunch of words. It's, um, less a game and more an interactive book. Stares at audience. <laughs> ah. What's the point of that? Well, you read it, and then you see what happens, I guess. But all you do is read the words. Do people actually pay for this? Well, maybe it's a little too pretentious. How about skee-ball? <laughs> I like the direct, just like, hey, you're playing one of those. Hey, hey, re current reader. Hey, they're talking about you. <laughs> Toko frowns at the name. It doesn't even remotely tell her what it could be. I guess. Great, how's your aim? I don't know. I could help you throw if you need it. Trust me, it's really fun and really simple. You have these balls, and there's these circles. Ugh. I suppose a small snack would be nice. She walks up to a pretzel stand named Uncle Uziles. It says all pretzels are heaven sent. I wonder if I'll get in trouble for eating here. Mm -mm. You do have a point. Food gatekeeper, how many pretzel dogs can I get with 20 human dollars? Uh, like 10? Mmm. If I get five of those, how many pretzel burgers can I get? Oh, uh, like four? Would or would there not be money left over for a drink? Uh, maybe a medium? Then I would like to have five pretzel dogs with everything, four pretzel burgers with everything, and a strawberry soda. Uh, yes, ma'am. While waiting on her food, Ginjo glances over and notices Toko and Nadia in the distance. Mmm. Mmm. Probably, but I just ordered food. Mmm. She really is being rather unobservant. Ginjo turns away when the clerk calls to her that her food is ready. Yes, thank you. Uh, you do you not need help, or... That will not be necessary. Taking it to a nearby table, Ginjo sits and goes about eating. Takes her about 10 minutes to get through all of it. If only I earned more money today. Genjo begins to wander toward the arcade when she's approached by a strange man. Whoa, I saw you eat that in like 10 minutes. Super impressive. With your skills and my coaching, you could dominate the competitive eating scene in the city. Competitive eating? Totally. Here, take my card. You could be the next champ. After absently taking the card, Genjo continues her path toward the arcade. Champion. I am the champion. I kind of love Ginjo. Back at the arcade, Toko seems to have discovered a newfound talent in ski ball, having managed to earn about 50 tickets so far. Seeing Toko enjoy herself, Nadia looks around to find a game she can play when she notices Ginjo outside the arcade. Ooh! She waves at Ginjo, whose nonchalant stride takes her inside. Toko glances up at Nadia's exclamation and twitches when she sees Ginjo. She glares at Ginjo as she approaches and stuffs her tickets in her pockets. Uh, hi, you're Toko's friend from before, right? We are acquaintances. Right, it was, uh, Gina... Ginjo. Oh, my mistake. 
What do you want, Ginjo? Tuku, that's so rude. They're not his right. I should talk to Nadi instead of Toku. Ugh, you're the one following us and I'm the rude one here? I was not following you this time. Earlier, yes, but now I'm here for food and entertainment. You can't even taste the food. I do taste it. Food is not just in the mouth, it is also in the soul. In the heart. Toko's taken aback and stunned into silence, having not expected something like this from Ginjo of all demons. Why else would getting food we love fill us with such pleasure evokes such fond memories? Uh, that's like really sweet. Oh, so like... Interesting. So, the thing that she pulls from... Because she's a gluttony demon, I guess. Every time she eats part of a soul, like, she specifically seeks out the part that's, like, affection toward food. And then when she eats that food, even though she can't taste it, she, like, gets the same satisfied feeling from the souls that she's eaten. I'm gonna guess that that's what they're talking about, which is, like, kind of cool. <laughs> uh... Also, Rhapsody likes to watch. Regaining her composure, Toko resumes glaring at Ginjo. Whatever, just get lost and leave us alone. Toko, I get you two don't seem to get along, but that's no reason to... Fight? Not is right. She has a good head on her upper torso area. I'll make you leave if I have to. Don't push me. Toko, are you even listening to me? I'm not here to fight at all. Well, I am. Nadia gl nervously glances around when she realizes they've started attracting a small crowd. She tugs at Toko's shoulder for a moment. Toko, please, we're making a scene. I once again advise listening to Nadia. Let's go, you, you weirdo human food eater. When you've been here long enough, Toko, you too will understand the heart of food. That's it. Nadia, stand back. Uh, Toko, don't. Come on! I'm not, uh, I'm, 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 <laughs> Okay, <laughs> sorry, I just need, I needed to get that out. <clears throat> I'm not here to fight you. Then just stand there, it makes this easier. hey -ya! Took a sprints toward Ginjo, first raise, fist raised to attack. <laughs> she only gets within five feet of Ginjo before suddenly falling flat on her face. Well... Toko gets to her feet and sends Ginjo an ineffective death glare. That was a cheap trick and you know it! It was obvious one. It was an obvious one. It was an obvious one any other demon would have seen coming. Don't blame me for your lack of skill. Toko once again charges at Ginjo, this time aiming to kick at her. However, she immediately feels a pressure on her supporting leg. It buckles and she falls to the ground. Rolling herself onto her butt, Toko grips her knee, now stinging from the hard mall floor. Ow, why can't you just fight fair? Damn it, Toko, you're causing a scene. You don't seem to understand how demons fight at all. You're right, Toko probably does not understand how to fight anyone. And you add insult to injury. Awesome. You are defeated. I'll see you later, Toko. Nadia. Ginjo saunters off in victory while the sound of smug giggling follows after her. Realizing the fight appears to be over, the crowd disperses. <sighs> Toko, are you okay? What on earth were you thinking? How could I be expected to beat something that I can't even see? Oh, shoot. <laughs> oh, that's why. <laughs> it's that thing that Gincho's always talking to that's, like, not there. Huh? See what? Uh, did you really have to fight her? She was gonna take... She could have done something to... Us. <sighs> Look, I don't appreciate being followed around either, but I doubt... Never mind, you just... You got really carried away. Sorry. She wasn't doing anything, so why did you try to fight her? You meant well? <sighs> Look, can you help me walk? My knee hurts. Here, let me feel. Ow! Well, it's probably bruising. You should just put ice on it when we get back. Excuse me, ladies, I'm with the mall security. Uh-oh. Ugh, crap. Man, what a loser. How did I get saddled with someone as pathetic as her? Daw. Daw, cutie patoots. <laughs>